Let me welcome the His Excellency, distinguished uh, brother, and right honourable Simon Bagola, long former speaker, former governor, former this, former that, immediate past director general of the campaigns of the All Progressives Congress, the largest party in the whole of West Africa, in the whole of Africa, and the ruling party in Nigeria. Uh, so, uh, uh, <laughs> so we welcome you. Uh, uh, we know you, but the public would like to know you more. So if there are things that you feel that the public should know about you, which are not contained in your CV, Use the next few minutes to roll them out. Outside that, outside that, uh, maybe because you've been a, a speaker, maybe because you were a DG that brought this government to bear, we, we may have to do the needful. The floor is yours. Three times speaker. Three times speaker. But that does not amount to one senator. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Your Excellency, Mr. President of the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Your Excellency, the Deputy Senate President, very distinguished senators that are here, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. I will say to God be the glory. I am here, Simon Bakolalong. I did primary school, I did secondary school, I read law, master's degree in law. In law. I attended, I contested for House of Assembly. After the contesting for the secretary of the Nigerian Bar Association in my state. After House of Assembly, I was elected speaker two times. After the second time, I attempted to be governor of Plateau State. Again, I was given opportunity two times to be governor of Plateau State. I left uh, as a governor of Plateau State. But before that, I was appointed as the director general of the famous campaign that brought in the renewed hope. I thank God, Mr. Senate President recognized that. So today I am before this esteemed Senate. Senate. First, while I was governor, while I was speaker, I was elected two times as the chairman of the Conference of Speakers of Nigeria. Even when I left, they still elected me as chairman of former speakers of Nigeria. I am still up to date their chairman. I am very happy that many of my members are before this distinguished Senate. I have seen a few of them as distinguished senators. Mr. Senator Anao is over there. So many of them, association of former speakers, who are now senators, who are now distinguished senators. I moved from there. I moved from there to be a governor. As a governor, I was elected as the chairman of the Northern Governors Forum. And as the Northern Governors Forum, again, presided over many of the governors who are now senators that are here. Again, I saw Senator Tambual over there. I saw Senator Yari over there. And many of the senators that are there, whom I have interacted with several. <laughs> and all of them were chairman of the Governors Forum and we work together, irrespective of our political differences. Even at that, when we were in the National State Assembly, we work with a lot of them who are in the House of Reps, and today, one-time senators, and they are back again. I've seen Senator Ningi, I've seen a lot of them here, a 
lot of them I don't want to mention all because time is not on our side. At the Governor's Forum, I'm very happy that Senator Omai is here, although running away again back to join us, <laughs> to, join, to join us outside. Senator Sita and so many of them that we work together in the party. The greatest moment of my life, too, was when I was given the opportunity as the Director General of the campaign to bring in the Renewed Hope. During the Renewed Hope, I work with the Senate President, now current Senate President. Mr. President, congratulations. I work with the Deputy Senate President and many of the principal officers that are here. It was not an easy task to bring back a renewed government in Nigeria. But by the grace of God, we brought Asuajubola Ahmed Tunubu and Kashim Setima. Let me use this opportunity to thank all of you. And I think many of the senators that are here through the campaign that we came back and delivered again a new hope for Nigeria. I will also use the opportunity, lest I forget, to thank uh, our chairman, uh, President Muhammad Bwari and his dear wife. I must also thank Mr. President and his wife, uh, Senator Remy, during the campaigns. And I thank all of you, especially the SPC senators that were here. Although I saw myself as the least, as, as the least among them, but with their cooperation, and today we have a Senate that everybody has a hope that there will be a renewed Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. In the course of my campaign, uh, I saw the Senate President give a name. He said he will now be called... He said he will now be called... Uh, he, he will now be called yes, father. But before that, we call him Uncommon Senate President presiding over an uncommon Senate in an uncommon environment for uncommon Nigerians. And I pray that at the end of the day, Nigerians will have this uncommon hope. I will not forget my senators. I am privileged, and I must extend this gratitude to all of you, for electing one of us from my state. The minority leader is from my state. He's now my leader in the state, Senator Mwaku. And, uh, the, the soldier, the soldier senator, A.V.M. Napoleon, is also from my state. And then the young one, and they say very active too and strong, Senator D.K. Plan, who are three of my senators. I don't want to name a lot of them, because when you go to Ben, when you go to Nasara, they will tell you they came through me. But I thank God that uh, they are here. My own is to come back again and express my gratitude to all of you and to stand here to thank Mr. President for the confidence that he saw in some of us and he said we must come back and join him again to work as cabinet members of, uh, of, his, uh, of, his, of his cabinet. So it's my privilege to come here and extend my gratitude to all of you as I stand and appeal for also an accelerated approval so that I can quickly join Mr. President, like others, to work for the common good of this country. I thank you very much, Mr. President. Distinguished Senators, what you just said was like a state of the nation address. And, uh, and it were, we are not doing a confirmation today. But he was already given a valedictory acceptance speech. <laughs> uh, so, uh, distinguished uh, uh, chairman, when you were the director general of the last campaign, I was actually the vice chairman. Of if I ask you any question, because I can attest to your integrity, I can attest to your capacity. But I want to ask one question. No, not the question. I want to recognize one senator to ask you a question if he has any. And uh, that senator is not way We are not talking about Romani, we are talking about Lalong. Now, uh, Senator Air Vice Marshal Napoleon Bali, 
retired. Is he here? A AVM. Here is your senator. Or here is your your Brazilian nominee and your former governor. Do you have anything to to say? Senate President, distinguished colleagues, definitely I have something to say. Uh, the nominee who was the former governor of Plateau State, we are from the same senatorial zone. And I can tell you categorically that the senatorial zone, that is where I come from, Napoleon, Vinka Valley, Plateau South, we the people of uh, Plateau South were happy with Mr. President for nominating uh, Governor Simon Bakola along. And uh, he has read his CV. And honestly, you can attest to the fact that he is vast. So I will solicit. I know the minority leader who we are all from the same state who also say it. But my constituency definitely has asked me to request the senators to confirm Governor Simon Bakola along as a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. On that note, sir, I know as a chairman Northern Governors Forum, as he said, more or less he has been presiding over the 19 Northern States governors. So definitely I know that he has a clear picture of the insecurity bedeviling this country, the challenges, especially in the northern states. So I will want you to know the kind of quality this my former governor has because I strongly believe as a lawyer, but there are a lot of lawyers that have come before us. But I think because of the privilege he has to have presided over the 19 state governors, I wish Mr. President will consider him and make him a Minister of Defense. Mr. Nominee, in the event President Bola Tinubu makes you the Minister of Defense, can you please tell me precisely what do you think are the challenges, the security challenges in this country, and what do you have in your cup at the Federal Executive Council so that we prefer solutions, not just talking to mitigate the insecurity going on in this country. Thank you, Mr. President. I must say that uh, I must say that I'm very happy that you that uh, Air Vice Marshal Napoleon Bali retired. Not only do you applaud Mr. President for this nomination, you and your senatorial district, where our brother, Governor Lalong, belongs. All of you are very excited, and they have asked you to support his nomination in totality. But it will be incomplete if I don't ask the minority leader. Uh, no, it's not everybody that will speak. If I don't ask the minority leader to say what, well, but if you want uh, to yield the floor to distinguished Senator Plan, DK Plan, uh, but please be, ve be very brief because uh, what I wanted to hear, I have heard, and I will take my decision. Thank you. The President of the Senate, sitting as chair, my distinguished colleagues, I am Senator Diket Plan, Senator representing Plateau Central, the humble court of the state. Distinguished colleagues, I am rising again to support in depth the submission met by my colleague, the Senator representing Plateau South. My former governor, standing as a nominee, is not only 
a citizen of Plateau South, by the name Governor Lalong symbolizes Plateau State. When his name was pronounced as a senator, my people, as, as a minister nominee, my people have an idea that this is, this symbolizes systematic hard work reward. I, I join him to express the gratitude of the people of Plateau, Plateau Central, and I know Plateau in its totality, to Mr. President, for deciding to nominate our leader in whom we are well pleased. My colleagues, Governor Lalong is a humble, compassionate, peace-loving, an inclusive leader. I believe that his nomination will at the end of the day remain a pride for us as people of Plato and Nigeria. I thank you indeed. This is quite selective. This is quite satisfying to the people of Plato. And I assure you that by the time he is graciously confirmed, Nigeria will be happy. Mr. President, before I sit down, I do know that you believe in stability. When you came up, your desire is that Nigeria should be cohesive, Nigeria should be together. My former governor symbolizes stability. He is inclusive in governance. And I believe this is a wise choice, and I thank you because I know by us you will be confirmed. Distinguished colleagues, the minority leader uh, yielded the floor to Senator Plank, and uh, he says he doesn't have anything to add, that uh, all have been said. Uh, you, you want to greet him? Yeah. Okay, you can greet him and let him take a bow. Thank you, Mr. President, sitting as chair, distinguished colleagues, Mr. President, I want to align my thoughts with the views of Senator Napoleon Bali and that of Senator Decade Plank. Mr. President, the first list of ministerial nominees that came, Plateau was not found there. We had a meeting, the three of us, and we were thinking of running to your house so that you take us to Mr. President. But the second list came, and we saw the name of Barrister Simon Bakul Lalong, the former governor of Plateau State. We were elated, we were happy, and we knew that President Bola Ahmed Tinibu has done us proud. Mr. President, I'm happy that you have worked together with the nominee and he has worked with quite a number of senators here in his capacity as the former speaker of Plateau State House of Assembly and also as the governor of Plateau State where he was the chairman of the governor's forum. I wish he had tested the pre his presence in these red chambers. I would have appealed to my colleagues that, as it is with our tradition, that we ask him to take a bow and leave. Don't hear me well, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, 
I'm not done, sir. I therefore wish to thank all my colleagues. I'm very confident in the level of his intelligence and his capacity to answer any question, sir. But I know that as has been, he has given us his CV. We have seen all that he has done before for this country. And therefore, I wish to recommend to all distinguished senators here that we ask him any question we can ask him and allow him to take a leave of the Senate and leave. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, um, our able Director General Emeritus and a, a very esteemed nominee, there is a, a particular question that Nigerians will be interested in. I know that security cannot be discussed in public, but at least you can proceed some solutions that are generic in nature. Somebody asked that if you were to be given a portfolio that has something to do with the defense of the citizens, what would you do differently in order to ensure that people can sleep with their eyes closed, both in Benue, in the Plateau, in Borno, and even in the Southeast and South South? Just proceed a generic answer and thereafter you step forward and take leave of the Senate. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I said earlier that I acted as the Director General of the campaign. In this campaign, we drew up a manifesto. That is the manifesto produced by today His Excellency the President of Nigeria. Very robust on how to handle security in Nigeria. In, in Nigeria. While I was the chairman of the Northern Governors Forum, where we had a lot of these issues, we took a document, we took a summary, because we considered this comprehensively. And this was chaired by many security experts, and we produced a document. Mr. President, part of this document was, first of all, to look at the roles of traditional rulers. It was under my watch that we produced a document which we thought that was going to form part of the constitutional amendment to allow traditional rulers to be part of addressing security issues in Nigeria. The second one, Mr. President, is that it is a long time that we did recruitment within our security. We need manpower, but we also need technology. It is a long time. And these are part of the manifesto. Without technology, the wars in the world now are fought on te with technology. You must, but you can need humans to man this technology. It was the issue, and I thank, I said that the chairman, former chairman of the Governors Forum is here, two of them, and within the Governors Forum produced a document. Now, what was this document? Was to go beyond our traditional issues and to look forward. First, the capacity must be improved of the manpower for the, for the armed forces. Secondly, there must be training and retraining and then provisions of technology. Today you are seeing uh, Tucano, Tucano jets. It was part of the request that we must start seeing Tucano jets flying all over. The second one is that drones. People are using drones to the point where we all agree that if it was issue of money, we agree that let the money be deducted from our excess group. Security is very important. If we don't have security, there will be no development. And those were some of the issues that we all agreed. And that was why we said we should not leave traditional, in the North, we can't leave traditional rulers out. I pray that the, uh, we'll have another opportunity for constitutional amendment and that bill that was kept out will now be reintroduced again. And then, like I said, it's just a matter of summary. But let me not forget, because I saw my comrade friend, Oshomele, Senator Oshomele, 
He was the deputy director of operation of the campaign. So he's a senator. I'm sure other details he can always produce on my behalf because the documents are still with him. He has not handed over everything to me. <laughs> the Senator Senator Oshomale. So issues of security should be seen to be very, very important. I thank you, uh, my Senator, for bringing up this. But at the local situation, I always say that what we did in Plateau, security is not all about shooting. It's not all about that. That is, yes, it's good. But there are local issues, and some of these local issues will have to connect with diversity of the environment. And when it comes, because there you see ignoreligious crisis, it's not only banditry. Where you have ignoreligious crisis, the best way to handle it is through dialogue. It's through dialogue. That is why in my state we introduce the Peace Building Agency. And Mr. President commissioned it and recommended that to every state. Because when two tribes are fighting, it's not soldiers that will come and kill. You have to understand that Nigeria belongs to everybody. And so long as you are peaceful, so long as you are not into criminality, you have a right to live everywhere. And in that kind of situation, like Plato, where we have 53 ethnic nationalities, it is not easy to govern. But it is easy to govern when you give everybody sense of responsibility, sense of recognition. And that is why in Plato you have ethic. You have the ethic from Akwaibam. You have Yorubas. You have South South. You have Fulani. You have different tribes. And in order to have peace in Plato, you must give them that sense of recognition. That I did for in the last eight years. So if it is local, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, your Excellency, uh, uh, the nominee, uh, so, uh, uh, I wrote, I wrote a long. You were almost uh, veering off into a campaign. So, uh, we, the Senate is made up of all political parties. So the people that even supported you the most are the people from the uh, opposition parties. They are the ones who endorse you. We that work with you, we uh, we can't even say anything because they've closed our mouth. They said they support you. And so, because they support you, and we have already endorsed you, and we nominated you, you don't need to preach to the converted. Just step forward and then take leave of the Senate. And I wish you luck. It won't Senate. One Senate, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying, one Senate. But uh, if uh, there's something I wanted to mention, but you people are not going to allow me to mention it. Will you allow me? Okay, so I will, so I will mention the fact that, I will mention the fact that Senator Napoleon Bali will be very relieved that he's going to the federal cabinet. 